to yourself at home and you walk in in your living room with your keys and the power just goes out all of it you can't see a thing and then you drop your keys so as you're looking for your keys you're groping all around on the floor you can't find them you notice through the window that the street light is on so you decide hmm how about i go outside to the street light and look over there so you go outside and you start looking all under the street light looking in the bushes you're looking all in the dirt and then a neighbor sees you and says hey what are you looking for i'm looking for my keys so then the neighbor is like, all right, cool, I'll help you. And then you're looking for the keys all outside in the light, in the dirt. And then the neighbor's like, where's the last place you had your keys? He's like, in the house. So why are you looking out here? And that story, when I heard that story by Dr. Wayne Dyer, it reminded me of myself. I was looking outside for everything that I needed, not realizing that it was always inside. Postmaster, guess I had to get inside of me to find out the keys I needed to live. Growing up by two wonderful parents, my parents decided to have five children. So I was number two of five boys. My mother always reminded us when we were young, she always wanted a girl. And she never got that girl, which led her to keep having children until she gave up. <laughs> she instilled in us that we should always work together and you know stay in school and be smart and hard work was going to get us to success so we went to private school because she wanted to be better than public school and funded us they stayed together they stressed and worked their hardest to put us through school so we could go to school graduate go to college get a good job house kids retire die Happy life. <laughs> now, that was a good plan, and we believed that plan, and we all started that journey. Along that journey, the stresses of putting five kids through that, my parents decided to, they didn't like each other anymore, they decided to have a divorce. So that idea, we didn't really have the example. Anyway, we kept on following suit. I went to school. I had a great first year of college, lots of fun, kept my grades up, came home, my high school girlfriend was still there, we had a great summer, but before I went back, she got pregnant. So I was like, uh-oh, I'm falling off track. I, I'm, I'm gonna mess up. I had one kid, I was like, I'm gonna go back to school, start taking classes again, and then she had another kid. I'm like, oh, snap, and they're mine. And it's like, oh crap, I messed up. I'm gonna fail, life sucks. And I started to feel a little bit depressed because I knew the path. You work hard, you go to school, you go to college, don't go to jail, retire, and you die. Have fun. And it took a while. It took a lot of time. But then I started paying attention that I started looking. Should I go back to school? Should I try to be like somebody else? Should I follow all these other people who are living these nice looking lives? And I was looking outside everybody else and not really looking at what can I do for myself? What am I good at? What do I want to do? Do I really want to go back to school and study to be a doctor? I didn't. Did I want to be a lawyer? No. But that's what my parents wanted me to do. So I was following those footsteps. And it took me a while because I just lost track, lost direction. And now I have kids, so I'm like forced into this little path of Quinn, your father now. Are you gonna be a good father? What's a good father? Who's your example? Another person I got I'm looking outside, I'm like, maybe I should be like Bill Cosby. Whoops. Uh. <laughs> and it's like I'm looking at TV shows trying to mimic because all my dysfunctional family stuff wasn't really a good example. And then how successful should I be? I gotta look at all these other people outside because I had no firm standing around me in my neighborhood in my network where I can actually just say I'm gonna look to you and then I met this guy Les Brown and he said that everything I needed was in me of course that was just like you don't know what he's talking about he's just a motivational speaker and I ended up going to church anybody go to church don't raise your hands I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pick on you I already know you know once a year don't count but it was like you know, I started skimming through the book. So I'm not a 
oh my gosh, religious person. I started skimming through and it started to just give me more direction. And it gave me a different set of keys and it just made me look at myself differently. I started to appreciate and understand how to answer the question, who am I? Where am I from? What can I do? Where am I going? And who do I wanna be? And I realized that my life I was living on this path of journey was all outside of me. But as soon as I started to look inside, I started to feel like I had purpose. And now I built a better understanding of my relationship with my kids, with my wife. And we're not planning on having a divorce ever, maybe in 2050, I'm just playing. <laughs> but ever, ever, never, we're gonna be happily married. We're gonna set the bar that was not given to us because we just said, we create this life. Decisions, decisions shape destiny. So we decided that we're gonna just do something out of the norm for us. And we're gonna work hard, we're gonna create our own job, work from home, we're gonna spend time with our kids and create a stable foundation for our family. And that's what we've done. So, my name of my speech was Finding the Keys. And those were the keys that I found when I came back inside. Thank you.